peace. What is up, family? I am Oneno, and thank you for tuning into the blog once again. Uh, first, I just want to say a big shout out to everybody that responded to my last video, both in the comments as well as on my Instagram and in my emails. Thank you so much for your support, and honestly, yesterday was just a very challenging day for my family as my sister was at that Las Vegas shooting. It was just such an emotional experience, one that I was certainly not prepared to deal with yesterday. And so that's why I wanted to make this video today. The topic of this video is gonna be how to deal with fear mongering. Because from this point forward, this entire subject of this Los Angeles, or I'm sorry, Las Vegas shooting, the media is going to be creating narratives and conversations are gonna naturally take place in our society to figure out how we can prevent something like this from happening again. And I think it's very important how we go about this next piece of the process because there's, it, it's like a catch-22. On one level, we need more gun control laws. And on another level, we need to end violence. That's really what we're after here. We need to end violence. And I don't know that gun control laws are actually going to end violence. Um, the, the obvious narrative that has already begun and will continue to expand is that we need to make more gun control laws so that things like this don't happen in the future. And on the surface level of that conversation, I agree. On the surface level though, that's a very important statement because nobody needs fully automatic rifles, nobody. And when I say nobody, I mean not even the military. This is where I actually stand on the issue. If we are really wanting to heal the planet and we're really wanting to build a community based on love and not fear, then the very first thing that we have to do is figure out how to live in harmony with each other. So gun control laws don't necessarily figure that out. Gun control laws just make it harder to purchase a gun legally, which in some ways it should be. Nobody needs a fully automatic gun, not even the military. Nobody needs these weapons. And by making, by continuing to make advanced weaponry, we're just continuing, continuing to propagate and perpetuate the idea of war, and that, uh, that war is necessary somehow and weapons need to be advanced. But you see, we already reached the plateau of the weapons advancement technology back in the, whenever we used the atomic bomb. That is like the height, that's the height of weapons advancement right there. And we almost destroyed our entire world by utilizing these weapons. And so I feel like it's very important to realize that weapons and defending ourselves is not the answer. But now let me really clarify what I just said. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have the right to defend ourselves. I'm saying we should absolutely have the right to defend ourselves. But we can't just have civilians take the hit for this terrorist activity. And what I mean by that is that the government, if the government is going to keep all of their weapons and ammunition, and then civilians are going to get penalized and weapons and ammunition are gonna be kept behind walls, well then that puts the, the people, the free and independent people at a disadvantage to the government, which is not a good position to be in. So with that being said, I am, I'm split because I think that gun control laws are very much a catch-22. Part of me fully agrees that we should make it much more difficult to buy especially fully automatic weapons. Uh, if you buy a fully automatic weapon, you're either incredibly paranoid or you're looking to use it somehow, or you think that you need to defend yourself against some kind of World War III that's on its way. And if you're preparing for that, then you're expecting it to happen in some sense and you're trying to make it happen in some sense. So I don't think that we need those weapons. But now where I flip to the other side is that if the government is going to have those weapons, then the people have the right to have those weapons as well because we are the government. We do not, we the American people do not answer to a body of politics that is above the American people, not even the president. If you really understand civics and you understand how our political system is made up, 
The president, AKA Donald Trump, serves the people. And what that means is that the president is beneath the people when it comes to his power in our country. We all seem to be brainwashed and indoctrinated to think that he has more power than the average person in our country, but that's not true. He is actually bound and confined by the Constitution. And we are not. We are free and independent above the Constitution. And the Constitution was built and put into play so that anybody who wants to don the role of leadership must abide by the rules that the Constitution states. And that those rules are things like the people have the right to speak their mind, the people have the right to defend themselves, the right to bear arms. All of those things should never be messed with, ever. Those are the very foundational pillars that make up freedom in America. But now the question becomes, what about fully automatic weapons and fully automatic rifles and stuff like what just happened in the Las Vegas scene? The problem is if we try to regulate it, then there becomes an imbalance in the system. And yet if we don't regulate it, then the imbalance of terrorism is a very real threat. So we've got to figure out some way of compromising on this front. What I, what I propose as a compromise has nothing to do with gun laws, actually. And um, what it has to do with is your heart and what you choose to spend your time focusing on. If you, if you really want a peaceful society, if you really want to live in a place that functions with peace as its main commerce, then you have to start with our leaders, and what I mean by leaders is leaders in politics, leaders in um, technology, leaders in entertainment, and how could we possibly expect to live in a peaceful society when we are constantly pumping our brains and our emotions full of judgments for one another? You see, in our country, we think that we can watch things like reality television, or we can we can expose ourselves to horribly polarizing humans. Donald Trump is a very polarizing human. And yet we seem to think that we can expose ourselves to these individuals and institutions that teach us to judge ourselves and to judge one another. And yet we seem to think that we can create some kind of peaceful euphoria. Like that's never going to happen until we figure out how to accept ourselves and accept our brothers and sisters. So in essence, gun control is gonna happen naturally as a byproduct of if we learn how to respect and love and accept one another. And that is not some kind of new age bullshit. Let me tell you, that is not some new age bullshit. This is real. And the way that it's real is that if you love yourself, you won't want to harm another human being because the moment you raise your consciousness, then you will see the other human being as potentially growing to that level of consciousness as well. So that's why I wish that shooter that did these horrible things in Las Vegas, I wish him nothing but love. I don't wish hate upon him because the very fact that he did what he did sh shows and proves and displays that he already hated himself to such a degree that he was willing to kill himself and to take thousands of people with him, or I guess hundreds of people with him in the process. So to give him more hate will never solve the problem. But then people say, well, if you just give him love and forgiveness, then you're condoning his actions. And that is absolutely not true. When you give love and forgiveness to somebody, it doesn't condone their actions. But when you choose not to forgive somebody, you're choosing to stay embittered in your own heart. And so we are about to experience a whole wave of fear-mongering that the media is going to be doing around this subject. And it's very important for you, especially if you consider yourself a conscious and awake human being, to remain centered in love no matter what happens from here forward. No matter who says what, no matter what bullshit propaganda is thrown around, if you can remain centered in love, then you can help actually mend the problem that created that shooting in the first place. And that's what we really need. We need a society that is full of humans that know how 
to love and support and become non-judgmental with one another. That's the only, that is literally the only way we're going to get out of this type of a situation. And some people might say, well, that's high hopes for humans. And, uh, you know, maybe it is, but I know that I can do it. And I know if I can do it, I know you can do it. So I'm just here to inspire you to do it because now is the time. If we don't do it now, then our whole world is gonna fall apart. We only have two options at this point in our society. Either we degrade into less and less freedoms, more and more fear, more and more hate being thrown around, and therefore more and more killings. Or we're going to evolve into more love and acceptance and tolerance of one another. And I don't mean tolerance in the politically correct sense. I mean tolerance in the genuine, unconditional, non-judgmental love sense. That's how I mean tolerance. That everybody can be unique and can be individual and yet we can love and tolerate the uniqueness and the individuality of every person. That you don't need to be some kind of cookie cutter human being. You can be yourself and you can express yourself how you desire to. The only rule, the only law that should be in existence is the golden rule and the rule of do no harm. Do no harm and beyond that, create euphoria. That's, that's the world I want to live in at the very least. So I just wanted to make a little video encouraging you that as you experience this onslaught of propaganda and media bias that is inevitable in this type of a situation, remember that you are the power structure of America not the government. The people are the power structure and what the people want, the people will get. If the people want to hand over their power to somebody else, then that's what will happen. But if the people want to maintain their power and to send a message to the rest of the world, then we will do that. And that's what I want to help generate and stimulate, especially in this time, because this is a very sensitive time. And it's very important what we do from here forward. So. I think that's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And um, we'll talk again soon. All right, hang in there. Oneness in sound. I am Oneno. Peace.